Well, good morning, everyone. Let me take my mask off so the people online can see my face. And you can see my face, too. There go. Of course, fighting with this microphone and mask is never fun. I'm glad to see you out on this very brisk Sunday morning. Good job, faithful people. And good job, online people, for turning in and being safe, too. We have some beautiful altar flowers today. And they are given by David Taylor in loving memory of his wife, Carolyn, who passed away 15 years ago today. And so if we weren't in COVID, I'd tell y'all to give David a big hug and give him some, but give him some extra love when you see him or drop him a note or a card or a phone call today. So we'll be sure and share love with David. Next Sunday, we're going to have a very special service. I know it's going to be cold again, so we'll see with the weather, but we're going to have a service of covenant renewal. And what we're going to do for that service is um, we're all going to make a covenant renewal to the Lord and with the Wesleyan covenant. And often we do that the first Sunday of the year. That's something that you probably have done in the past. But I thought this year it'd be good to do it the Sunday before we start Lent. And that's next Sunday. And also because it's Valentine's Day, I thought that's a good Sunday to proclaim our love for the Lord and for one another. So any of you who are are married and who want to renew your covenant vows with each other, you are welcome to do it that day. And all you have to do, it's very simple. You're just going to stand up where you are. You can take your mask off and look at each other and say your uh, the vows again uh, that we'll have prepared. They're in the bulletin too. And then um, you can, so online people, you can do it at home too. And then we'll have um, our covenant renewal for marriage vows too. So it'll be a very special service next Sunday. But we've got a great service planned for you today. Um, and then following that on, on, on the 17th is Ash Wednesday. And we're going to do two services this year, one at 10 o'clock in the morning and one at 7 o'clock. So that'll be at a special time of committing to begin the season of Lent. And we'll talk more about that next Sunday. Happy birthday to those folks having birthdays. We got a few having birthdays on this beautiful week. Happy birthday to them and happy anniversary uh, to the Seabirds who are having their anniversary. So happy anniversary to everyone and birthdays to all who are having birthdays. God is good, friends. And all the time. Let's worship and praise our good, great God. Ellie's here with us, and Bruce will be coming. He's, he's en route, but he'll be here uh, pretty soon, we hope. He said the roads were a little more snowpacked than he expected. But let's prepare our hearts for worship.
amazing applause, Deli. <laughs> Amen for that. Well, let's join together in the call to worship, friends. From the waters of creation, the earth sprang forth with light. From the waters of a womb, God's beloved Son was given to us. From the waters of a river, people were baptized and marked as God's children. Praise be to God, whose living gifts and presence have called us together. Our opening hymn, Let's Stand Together as We Sing, is All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray together. Almighty God, who watches over us, offering us light and hope, open us to the story of Jesus' baptism. Remind us of the many ways you reach out to us. May the image of water be for us an image of hope. Bring us closer to you, Heavenly Father. Embrace us anew with your love. In Jesus' name we come. Amen. And before we sing our next uh, hymn, I just want to tell you why we're doing Baptism of the Lord today. Because in, if you watch the uh, church calendar, you'll know that the Baptism of the Lord is always the second Sunday of the new year. It's always the Sunday after Epiphany. But I, um, this year I thought it would be good for us to look at Jesus' life in a little extended time because he didn't get baptized until he was 30 years old and beginning, ready to begin his ministry. And I wanted to do that. Then he went into the wilderness to be tempted uh, for 40 days. And I thought this year, I would have done it next Sunday, but I wanted to do Valentine's and a co covenant renewal next Sunday. So I wanted us to do it close to Lent close to our time when we think about our own baptisms, and then we think about our own times of testing. That's what Lent is a reminder of our own times, of when we are challenged and when we need uh, opportunities to grow closer to God and to express our faith better. So that's why we're doing a baptism of the Lord today. All right, our next hymn. Now, you all are going to have to sing out a little better than last time, all right? This is a beautiful song. I'm sure you know it, Hymn of Promise, and it's so perfect for today. You know, in this, it's, this is our, in this cold and snow of winter, there's a 
spring that waits to be. That's what we can claim today on this cold, snowy day. So let's sing out our praise. You can remain seated as you sing. Amen. It's one of my favorite hymns. Don't you love that hymn? I do. It's so beautiful. It's got great words. Our scripture today is the baptism of Jesus. So let's look at Matthew chapter 3. Um, we're going to look at that version of the baptism story. And we're going to begin with John the Baptist telling a little of his reason for baptizing and why he baptized. And then his prelude into the introduction of who Jesus is. So let's look at these verses from the Gospel of Matthew. John the Baptist is talking and he says, I baptize with water those who repent of their sins and turn to God. But someone is coming soon who is greater than I am, so much greater that I am not worthy even to be his slave and carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He is ready to separate the chaff from the wheat with his winnowing fork. Then he will clean up the threshing area, gathering the wheat into the barn, but burning the chaff with never-ending fire. And then the baptism of Jesus. Then Jesus went down from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. But John tried to talk him out of it. I am the one who needs to be baptized by you, he said. So why are you coming to me? But Jesus said, it should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. For John agreed to baptize him. After his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my dearly loved Son, who brings me great joy. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to our great God. Well, as we begin today, you're in luck. I have a bad joke for you. If you come out, you deserve it. That's you rewarded with a good joke. <laughs> so a little boy had been to church, and they had a baptism at his church. And so and later in the week, it was a beautiful summer day, and his mother saw him out there, and the little boy had set up a little stand like he was preaching. And the mother said, like, oh, he, he really loves going to church, and he's really getting a message out. And she was 
surprised to see their cat was just sitting there attentively watching the little boy preach. And she was surprised by that, but it seemed to be going well. And the next thing she knows, she heard the cat screeching. And the little boy had filled a tub with water, and there had been a baptism at his church. And so he was trying to baptize that cat. And the mother called out and said, Joey, you cannot baptize that cat. Cats are afraid of water. Stop doing that. And Joey said, well, he should have thought of that before he joined my church. (laughs) There was another story about baptizing cats, and he was a Baptist, and he was trying to immerse them in the bathtub, and and they said, no, you can't do that to those cats. And they said, and he kept fighting with the cat and finally said, all right, I guess you are going to have to stay a Methodist. I thought that was cute, too, (laughs) for baptism stories. (laughs) How many of you remember your baptism? If you were an infant, you probably don't remember your baptism. But maybe you were uh, older, like I was. Even though I've always attended a United Methodist Church, when I got ready to go to confirmation, there were three girls in my confirmation class, and none of us had been baptized, even though all of us had been raised in the Methodist Church. And later, you know, at the time, I didn't think anything about it. But later, I thought that's pretty odd that all of our parents chose not to baptize us, even though we were Methodists as infants. But that's what happened, and so um, us three pragmatic little girls were doing our confirmation. And my brother, who's nine years older than I am, he um, had just recently was getting uh, married, and he had to get baptized again to join his wife's church because they didn't accept um, infant baptism. And so he had to be immersed to join their church. And that often happens in different denominations. So being the practical little girls that we were, we all decided together that we could not, we should not be just sprinkled at our church. No, if we we're going to get baptized, and we all wanted to get baptized because baptism is, shows us that we are members of God's family. So baptism is important, and we wanted to get baptized, but being pragmatic little farm girls, we said we are going to have to be immersed, because we're not having any of this foolishness if we fall in love with somebody and have to go to their church. One baptism is enough, and we're going to do it the right way. You know, we're going to do it the universally accepted way, not the right way. We didn't think it was right or wrong about baptisms. We were just being universally accepted. If that's their silliness, then we will go ahead and get baptized the, the way that they will accept, and then we won't have to worry about it again. We're all very pragmatic. I can hear us talking about it even now, us little pragmatic girls, thinking about about our future husbands and our lives together. And it was so funny. So our poor pastor had to find an immersion <laughs> tank and had to find a church and ended up that we got baptized at the same church my brother got baptized in our little town because they had a baptismal, uh, an immersion tank, and they were willing to let our pastor come and baptize us. So on a Saturday morning, I remember all us girls were in our baptism clothes of nothing special, but we got our clothes that could get wet and whatever, and we got baptized. And it wasn't that big of a spiritual experience for us because all of us had been raised in the church. And for some people, when you get baptized, it is a very transforming moment. It's a very powerful moment. Because maybe you've lived your whole life. And throughout my ministry, I've been privileged to baptize. I love baptizing people. That's my favorite thing to do as a pastor. Because I love welcoming and reminding people they're part of the family of God. And I love that baptism is all about what God does for us. And it's a special gift God gives to us. So if you have not been baptized... Please see me. I want to baptize you. And I have done all sorts of baptisms. I have baptized, I had some confirmation kids. They wanted to be immersed, and they went to their family's creek. That was my biggest adventure as a baptizer (laughs) because it was in a little creek, a river, a little smaller than the Jordan River, but the Jordan River is not that big of a river. It wasn't like the Mississippi. (laughs) But we went to this beautiful creek in in the farm, and it was still a little brisk when we went. But I baptized all these kids, and the whole confirmation class decided anyone who needed to be baptized, they would all get baptized in the creek, even though some of them weren't too thrilled with that idea. But we did baptize in the creek, and it was a wonderful experience. 
experience for me. And I did make it up out of the creek bed, all right, and I was thankful for that. <laughs> but also, I baptized people in swimming pools, and that's also an adventure, yes. I've had people that wanted to be immersed, and we went to their swimming pool and got baptized. And I know other churches bring in the horse trough, <laughs> as I call it, the watering trough, and they do that. And I'm not against that, but I'm kind of lazy, and I don't like to siphon water, and that's the only way to get the water out of the tank, and I'm not really into participating in that, so I prefer to go out somewhere and do a baptism that way. But my favorite baptism, honestly, is babies. I love to baptize babies, and so I know I've got a couple out there in the church extended family, so you tell your family, get in here to get baptized as soon as the weather clears up and things, because that, I love to walk a baby through the congregation and show them to us, because babies are so how we come to Christ. We are really like little children, like infants. We're so innocent. And it's so joyful to baptize people in that, to baptize infants. And to see, and when all, any of us look on a baby, I have never seen anybody look on a baby and go, oh, a baby. No, everybody goes, oh, a baby, right? And it's especially fun for me because I'm holding them and it's really awesome. And also, I've never had a baby cry during a baptism, which I found quite remarkable. Babies seem to be happy. My husband baptized the baby, and the little baby touched his face. It was so sweet. It was so precious. So baptism is very important, and I hope if you, again, have not been baptized, you will certainly talk to me, because uh, if you want to follow Christ, if you want to be part of the family of God, baptism is our symbol that we do that. It's our outward expression. It's part of our sacraments. And so when we study Jesus' baptism, um, we can see that it's also a practical kind of thing that Jesus is doing today. Like, um, he is already, of course, the Son of God. He doesn't need to be baptized for the repentance of sin, and that's what John's baptism was. John was baptizing people for the repentance of sin, but Jesus was without sin. So he didn't need to be baptized in order to, to have his sin removed, but he wanted to be baptized again to show unity with everyone, to fulfill God's plan. And he did do that. He, he insisted that he was be, to be baptized, and John did baptize him. Now, interestingly enough, John the Baptist said he should be baptized by Jesus. But he said how Jesus would baptize people with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And interestingly enough, the scriptures record that Jesus never baptized anyone with water. I find that very interesting, even though he commanded us as his disciples to go and baptize people in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's one of the last things he said to us in Matthew before he ascended to heaven. And so, you know, being using water, and I have our water up here because we're going to remember our baptism here in a minute, that's a symbol of cleansing us. It's a symbol, and that's, what, that's also a symbol of our Holy Communion. Today we're going to participate in sacraments. And sacraments are physical elements, water and bread and juice, that become sacred or holy for us. They become holy moments to us. And even when we realize that, even when we remember our baptism, that water also is a sacred or holy thing for us. Now... It's a great joy to be baptized, and Jesus even fulfilled his father's wish by being baptized. That's what he said he was doing. And when he came out of the water, the Holy Spirit descended like a dove upon him and said, You are my beloved child, and with you I am well pleased. And so whenever we get baptized, we should listen to that voice from God. Or whenever we see a baptism, we should remember our calling as God's children. Listen for the voice of God saying to you, you are my beloved. I am well pleased with you. That's what baptism is about. So baptism, like I said, uh, is wonderful and a blessing. I have got the privilege of baptizing two people that were in their 90s. Can you imagine? I was surprised. I thought that was kind of shocking that they wanted to get baptized at 90. And one that really surprised me was a super active person in my church, in one of my churches. He taught Sunday school for years, and I couldn't imagine how he went all that time without being baptized, but he had not ever been baptized. And the fact was, then he became ashamed. 
right? That's, I had the first one of my first adult baptisms I did, I tried to encourage him to let me do it in the worship service because that's part of baptism and so all of us can celebrate with them as the family of God, walking them in officially as members of the family of God. But he wouldn't do it, he was too embarrassed. He was a very prominent person in our, in our community at that time. And he, he, didn't, he was embarrassed that he had never been baptized. But I was glad to baptize him. That was a joyful time for me. But I remember when I baptized both of those people in their 90s. It was in a little chapel in East Peoria. Um, they have a chapel there. And um, it was private services for them too. And I, both of them cried. They were so touched to be baptized. Even though they had been, both of them had been coming to church, both of them had been praying and doing their devotions and living lives of Christians. But being baptized was such a special time for them. Just having, and I sprinkled them. I didn't immerse them. I just sprinkled water. But you'll find when I do a baptism here that I do use quite a bit of water. It's kind of like pouring <laughs> because I splash water all over you because I love baptism, like I said. Baptism is an important part of peoples of faith. It's a special gift from God. And we call those things, as I said, sacraments. They impart God's divine grace on us. And so I hope everyone has their communion elements ready because that is, we're going to take communion here a little bit, not right this second, but I'm just going to remind you, people at home, because I forgot to tell you, you can pop, you know, run and get your juice real quick and your bread. And um, we take our sacraments very seriously. Now, in the United Methodist Church, we have the pastor lead in the sacraments. The pastor baptizes people, and the pastor leads in Holy Communion. Now, you've been to other churches that that's not the case, but that's how we practice it because we believe sacraments impart God's grace, and we want the person who is serving as God's a leader of God's church, the pastor, to do that, to lead in that. That's important because it's done, we want it to be done in a proper and methodical way. So we're Methodists, we like it to be done. Now when we get baptized, we believe as United Methodists that you only need to get baptized once. That was back to me and my little girlfriends. We knew that, we were studying confirmation, so we knew we only needed one baptism. One baptism is good enough to bring you into the kingdom of God, of course, and be part of God's family. So you don't need to be re-baptized, but you certainly can remember your baptism, and you should remember your baptism all the time. You can remember anytime you see water, you can think about your baptism. I've known people who have taken their showers and, and thought about God's cleansing love on them and, and washing away their sins. And even when we go outside and scoop snow, snow is a form of water, we can think about our baptism and remember and be thankful. But it's also our tradition that we can take communion more often than we take baptism. Communion is, we do baptism one time, but we do communion often, right? We do communion at least once a month in our church family, but we can do it more. And we'll do it on Ash Wednesday. I always have communion on Ash Wednesday and other certain holy days, Monday, Thursday, and I like to do it on Christmas Eve. Um, so we do communion at different times throughout the year too. And you, some churches take communion every Sunday, and that's a special part of their worship. But this sacrament is, again, God's cleansing us, right? Through the body and the blood of Christ. God's special grace is imparted to us. And whenever we take communion, we're witnessing that we are Christians. That's what we do when we're baptized. We're witnessing that we belong to God's family as a Christian. And that's what we do when we take communion. We witness that we want to be part of God's family. And when we do both of these things, we remind ourselves this special grace is all from God that we can do nothing to earn it. Ours is to receive it. And what a great gift that is, to receive God's special blessing. So when we do these things, we are blessed by God that we are participating as his family. Now, John the Baptist, as I said, baptized with water for the repentance of sins. And so every time we remember our baptism, we can think of repenting our sins. But he said an interesting thing. He said, Jesus is coming not only to baptize you with the Holy Spirit, but with fire. Now, last week we talked about Colossians and the sinful nature being cut away. And Jesus is burning up that dross. So you can think of things in your life that you know aren't helping you be a Christian. 
They aren't helping you walk with God. They aren't helping you live a life of faith. And you can think in your mind that God is cutting that stuff away, that that stuff is like straw, that it's going to be burned away, that when we go to heaven, especially all that will be, and all that will be left is refined, will be refined like beautiful, pure gold. That's the fire that Jesus brings. It's not a condemnation fire. It's a cleansing fire. It's like when I like to watch... um, uh, a pioneer woman um, on Saturday morning sometimes, and her husband, they live out in Oklahoma, and they have a big ranch, and her husband burns the prairie sometimes. Have you ever seen that happen? And you might do it around here. I've been here long enough to know. But um, you burn that kind of stuff to burn away the dross and to cause, and that's another thing forest fires can sometimes do is they help reseed uh, the forest, not the big fires we have nowadays from all the Um, other things that happen, but a natural cause forest fire can help burn away the dross or the stuff that's not useful. And that's what this is talking about. Jesus is coming to give us power from the Holy Spirit and to give us, to get away, get rid of some of this junk we're carrying around. And that's an important part of living because we can get weighed down by this extra baggage, but God is removing it from us with Christ's fire. And so that's part of what we can ask Christ to do, to burn away the dross in our lives, to empower us to be better servants for him. And it frees us to glorify God. And when another thing is that when we have the anointing of the Holy Spirit, a fire can burn within us. Now, it's kind of hard to be fiery on this cold morning, but we can still be burning with sparks of the Holy Spirit and shine for the Lord. We've talked about that. You know, the disciples were ablaze when they, when they started the local church, and, and people were drawn to them because they could see that they took it seriously. It was important to them. And that's an outcome of being around Christians. And it's why important, it's important for us to gather either like we're gathering online or to gather as the body of Christ. It is important to come together today. Like it's important for Dave to come together today when we celebrate and remember his wife's life and also her passing. It's important as the body of Christ that we can support him in his grief. And that's important for us to do. It's important for us to encourage one another on our journey. You know, we could have all stayed home, right? Matt and I could have just stumbled in here and tried to manage something like we did last week. But you needed to be in the building with other Christians. And that's true. Because that's an outcome of baptism and Holy Communion of our sacraments and the gift of the Holy Spirit is to burn with a fire and to share your fire with others. And here's an example of it. A man had been coming to church every Sunday. He came all the time, and then he stopped coming. And so, of course, after a few weeks, the pastor had to go visit him. That's what pastors do. They check on you if you don't come for a while. Now, I don't know you well enough, so some of you are like, well, she's never checked on me. You're right. I don't know who you are, (laughs) but I will. I'm going to stay around long enough for COVID to be gone, for me to see you without your mask, and I will know that you're missing from these pews. And then you'll have to figure out what we're going to do about it. (laughs) Or you could keep watching online too, but I still want to know who you are. Anyway, so the pastor went to visit, and this guy had a coal fire, and that means he had little pieces of coal that was in his fireplace keeping him warm on a cold day like today. And so the pastor just greeted him, and the man greeted him warmly. He liked the pastor. And, but the pastor never started his conversation. He never said anything. They just sat there and watched the blaze for a little while. And the man kind of waited for the pastor to start talking. But the pastor never did. And then during their, conver- just th- during their time sitting there, the pastor got up and took the tongs and took a piece of coal out of the fire, and it was red hot. It was a red hot coal, and he set it there on the stone mantle area, and they, then he just sat back down. And they both watched that coal cool down, so it lost its red fire, and just turn black again, just like a piece of coal. And then the pastor got up to get ready to leave, and the man got up, and as before he got ready to leave, he put the coal back in the fire. And both the pastor and the man watched as that piece of coal quickly turned red again, quickly got the fire from the other coals around it. 
And then the pastor went to leave, and the man got the message. And he said to the pastor, I will be there next Sunday. Don't worry. And the pastor just said, I'll see you then, and walked out the door. Because they realized that being together empowers us. Being together as the body in Christ empowers us. It fuels us. And when we separate ourselves from it, then we quickly cool down. We forget our baptism. We forget to take communion. We don't participate in the sacraments and the acts of grace that God has for us. We fall away, and we collect a lot more dross. We lose our our power to be God's people. So remember your baptism today, friends. That's what we're going to do here in just a minute. And also prepare yourself to take communion because God is for us. But we can quickly not be for God. We can quickly just be for ourselves. And we find out how far that gets us. Do you hear that loud banging? Do you think that is thunder, um, ice thunder, as they talked about, would be coming? I don't know, but I hope we're all right here. There's some loud banging going on. Or maybe it's the Holy Spirit knocking on our door telling us to be on fire. I don't know. But I know this. Our God is for us, and he wants us to celebrate, to remember, and to live faithfully. And he wants us, through the power of the Holy Spirit, to invite others and encourage them on their journey. Because this is a hard world, right? We all know how hard and difficult this last year has been for us. And it's going to continue for a while longer. But life has been hard even before COVID. There are many challenges. But as Christians, as followers of Jesus Christ, we have victory. So as we prepare ourselves right now to take communion, I want us to come to Christ's table and to be thinking about this table here. This table is the Lord's. And do you know who Christ invites to his table? (laughs) Not who we invite to Christ's table, who Christ invites to his table, who Christ welcomes to have baptism? Everyone. No boundaries. It doesn't matter what you've done or where you've been. So I first invite you to remember your baptism. And give thanks. And whenever you have water, to remember your baptism, the repentance of sins, the cleansing of Christ, the symbol that you are part of God's family. And be thankful. And then, as you take communion as the body of Christ, I want you to give thanks. For Christ's sacrifice for us, Christ's death and resurrection, our victory. Friends, on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread and he gave thanks to the Father for it. As he broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take and eat of this, all of you, for this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after they had supped, he took the cup. And he gave thanks to the Father for it, and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, take and drink of this, all of you, for this cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup in whatever forms it may partake of, we are proclaiming Christ's death and resurrection until he comes again in final victory. And we are proclaiming that we are Christians, that we follow Jesus Christ through victory. Let us pray. Loving and gracious Heavenly Father, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and those online, on all of us gathered in this worship experience in whatever may, form it may take. Pour out your Spirit on us. Let this bread and this juice, this wafer and this cup be for us, the body and the blood of Christ, that we then may be for this hurting world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. O Lord, through our time of worship, make us one with you and one with each other in ministry to all the world until Christ comes again in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Truly, O Lord, our Heavenly Father, all honor and glory is yours now and forever. Amen. And I realized I jumped ahead to uh, the communion from pastoral prayer, but we'll do pastoral prayer in a minute. But let's say the Lord's Prayer together before we take communion. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who've trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, remember, push down and pull up to get your bread out. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat. And this is the cup of salvation poured out for you. Take and drink. And give thanks to our great God as he does give us the victory over all things in Jesus Christ. Our victory is ours. As we proclaim it in our baptism, as we celebrate our sins being washed away, the victory is ours. As the Holy Spirit comes upon us and burns the dross away and empowers us to do things that we think impossible, the victory is ours as we gather all different ways as the body of Christ and have our coals burning on fire so that we can continue to live faithfully. Amen? Amen. Well, our, we will come to our joys and concerns, because I have some joys I want to tell you about. And then we'll sing our closing praise. Sorry, AV people. I really need to buy you some gift cards, because it's hard to be my AV person. <laughs> I could give you the names of my other church people who would could bemoan with you their suffering of having me jump around all the time. <laughs> it's the moving of the Holy Spirit. That's all I can say. <laughs> well, we want to praise God that Tammy Pulver got to come home after a hard week um, following a test that didn't go, you know, as it should have. But she's home now, and we praise God for that. So keep praying for Tammy as she deals with cancer, as she, they figure out different treatments for her and things. Dee Hanner did finally get out of the hospital. We praise God for that. She's down with her daughter, um, and she's getting her uh, dialysis treatments down there. But she's really struggling um, at this transformation time in her life. So please keep her in your prayers. Janice Madsen fell and broke her hip um, this week, but she did very well with the surgery. Um, she walked yesterday. I got to talk to her. She was in good spirits. So keep uh, Janice in your prayers. But also Mervyn Madsen had foot surgery, and he'll be getting a walking cast this week. So please pray for the Madsons and for their extended family. Uh, continue to pray for Ruth uh, Bowman, she, our bossman. She had a um, wonderful week, and she got her second COVID shot, and she's really doing well and was real upbeat, her daughter said. So we praise God for Ruth um, being able to do well. We want to keep praying for Lita Leach. She is really having a lot of continued hip pain, and we'll be going uh, to more doctors for relief for that, so please keep her in your prayers. Um, Rosie Miller is continuing to heal and doing well following her procedure last week. Um, Bob Bossert um, is healing from his fall as he waits for his knee replacement on the 15th now, so please keep him in your prayers. John Geshwin is doing better at home, so please continue to pray for him. And Dave Siebert is also continuing to do, get a little stronger. Keep praying for Kaylin and uh, Matt and the baby coming. And Vicki Thomas is doing really well with her healing, too. So we'll keep all those folks and others in our prayers as we go to our great God at this time. Let us pray together. As we take a moment in our hectic lives to quiet ourselves at your church, O oh Lord, we pray that we may feel anew your presence with us. Touch each of us with an anointing of your Holy Spirit, with the confidence of your presence in the journeys we walk. Help us as we are coming up on the season of Lent to think about the things that we can give up that are weighing us down and not helping us to live as people of faith. 
We thank you, O Lord, that as we confess our sins to you, of which you know full well, but as we remind you that we know them too, you are faithful and forgive us, that in the name of Jesus we are forgiven, and how great a gift that is. So, Lord, as we prepare to go out again and about our days and our lives, help us to be a witness for your kingdom. Help us to be a light, a beacon of hope, to be people who speak kindness as well as truth and love. Help us to be filled anew with all that you seek to give us. We thank you for the healings that we've seen continue to anoint and be with those who need your special healing and grace, especially Lita and Dee this week. May they know your love in a new way, and may they know your power in a new way. Anoint their families, and help us, O oh Lord, to encourage others as we walk together this walk until we join you in heaven. We praise you and thank you and give you the glory. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Well, let's stand together as we prepare to depart and sing our old, our wonderful old hymn of faith, Victory in Jesus. Savior forever. He's 
sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Well, as we prepare to depart, I just want to point out our beautiful a poinsettia cross here has had extra decorations added to it. And I just want to tell you the symbolism here. I want to thank Sandy Coakley for doing that for us. But the poinsettias are for Christ's birth. The cross, uh, the circle of crown of thorns on the cross is to remind us of Christ's death for us and suffering. And all of it is done with the hearts to remind us of God's great love for us. And so during Valentine's, uh, the next couple weeks, as you think of love, remind yourself that God so loved you that he gave Jesus for us. And let's receive the benediction. As it is a gift that we serve God, let us go forth now accepting the ministry to which each one of us is called. And let us rejoice in the blessings that our Heavenly Father pours upon us, being continually renewed by the power of the Holy Spirit as we faithfully follow in the footsteps of Jesus, let us go out in power and peace, knowing that our great God goes with us. Amen. Amen.